Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Paul Leslie Hour, and we got a special episode with Kenny Lovelace, guitarist and band leader of Jerry Lee Lewis, for more than 50 years. Now, before we begin the show, we need your help. You can keep this show going. You, yes, you go to www.thepaulleslie.com slash support, and we thank you. Let the show begin! Hey, it's me. Hey, Paul, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing okay, Paul. we got some pretty weather up here in uh, Franklin, Tennessee right now. How about, how about down in Sewanee? Oh, it's not bad here in the Peach State. Not bad at all. Sure, yeah, we've had we got some good uh, weather this week, boy. <laughs> it's about time we got some good weather. We've been snowed in, and iced in. <laughs> yeah, I imagine you all got it more than we did. Yeah, I'm sure we did. Yeah, this time, uh, but this last little thing that I they was talking about coming through here, coming from up north. Well, they kind of repassed us this time, thank goodness. But it hit Memphis pretty bad. Oh yeah, that's some ice, ice storm, you know. <laughs> A lot of trees down and power power lines out and stuff like that. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for spring. Me and you both. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good time of the year. <laughs> it is. It is indeed. Yes, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you hear a man on the other end there. I'm so delighted to welcome you all to this episode to listen to this interview with him. We have a very special guest he has made a great mark on American music as well as the world's music. Kenny Lovelace is an accomplished performing and recording artist. He's most known as a great guitarist and fiddler. Rock and roll, country, gospel, and traditional styles are but a few of the genres he's played in. He's most known for his long association with the legendary Jerry Lee Lewis, appearing on stage for countless concerts with Jerry Lee, Kenny Lovelace has played on the lion's share of Jerry Lee Lewis's records. Mr. Lovelace is also a singer and band leader, songwriter. He's worked with and played alongside so many greats, from Johnny Cash to Carl Perkins. I wanted to do this interview for a long time, and so thank you on behalf of all of our listeners for joining us. Well, it's my pleasure, Paul. It really is. I think you've got uh, a great thing in keeping keeping the classic rock and roll and, and country going and, and keeping the memories there, buddy. <laughs> oh. Well, I appreciate it, and thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Pleasure to be here, Paul. So how is the day going so far? <laughs> going good so far. I just, been, uh, I just went out and ran a few errands and just uh, went to the grocery store and <laughs> come back. Just been kind of taking it easy, just... Uh, had my phone charged up. Hopefully it'll last here that, uh, waiting to talk with you. <laughs> well, it's, it's about what I've been doing, running here and there. <laughs> well, like so many great people, some of the nicest people I've ever met are from Alabama. So I want to go back. Can you paint a picture with words? Just tell us uh, what was life like growing up? Wow, it's, it was interesting, uh, Paul. I, I grew up right outside uh, Florence, Alabama, and right across the river from Muscle Shoals. Muscle Shoals, Alabama. But I lived in uh, Florence, about 12 miles north of Florence, Alabama. So anyway, I grew up on a farm and worked on a farm for many, many years. We we, we were a poor family, but we we were proud and happy. You know, we, we farmed and tried to do what we could to make it. Meet ends meet, make ends meet, or rather. So anyway, we'd hoe cotton and pull corn and hoe corn, hoe cotton, bale hay. But during those times, I, when I was growing up, my mother and sister were musically inclined, and my 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 mother had a little mandolin, one of those little potato bug mandolins, and it had the round back, you know. And I was about four years old, and and I, I, I started wanting to try to fool with that, you know. So she, she taught me a couple of little chords I tried to make with four years old, you know, and I was green, but I just wanted to try it. So I'd, I'd have to get up in the bed to hold that thing so that, that round back would slip out from under me, you know. So I, I, I'd kind of cross my legs and, and hold it there and 
tried to get her to show me a, a couple of chords, you know, which she did. And I went on from there as I was growing up. Well, I got five or six, uh, seven. Uh, I was wanting to try to play the fiddle some. So anyway, my daddy, you know, he finally got up enough money. He bought me an old fiddle for five dollars. And it only had two strings on it. <laughs> and, and you're supposed to have four, but I mean, back in those days, I mean, it's hard to get hold of a string, you know. <laughs> so anyway, but I, I started to learn. I, I had the A string and the, the E string and the A string. That's two, that's the first two strings that goes on. And I, I started using that, trying to get my bow going. And, and I learned to play a few little hoedowns just on that two strings, you know. And one one day, uh, had to, Daddy we got, we got got a little cotton out, so we had a little money. So he he bought me he found me two more strings. I started playing that, and I started getting used to those other two strings, and, and I started playing playing the fiddle some. And then I uh, wanted to at the age of twelve, I started playing in fiddlers contest down there in Alabama, Collinwood, and Lawrenceburg, and and Florence also. And so, and I'd, I'd, I'd go with my daddy to always carry me. He never could play music, but he loved, he loved music and he'd, he'd always make sure that I got there. He'd drive me up from Lawrence, which is about 15 miles up to Collinwood, Tennessee from, right across the line there from Florence. And, uh, we, you know, we had, uh, one day we was done a fiddler's contest and they had a bunch of fiddlers there. And so then I'd been practicing a lot playing old Joe Clark. <laughs> And uh, so anyway, the, the, the title thing was going on, and I played my deal, and the other fiddlers came on. And, you know, by, by George, I won first prize. <laughs> and and my daddy, he was tickled to death, too. He said, you know, son, said, you know, we're going to eat good next week. Because <laughs> so, I won $30, but they paid off in groceries. Oh. $30 worth. Thirty dollars worth of groceries they gave me. And Daddy said we're going to eat good next week. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that that goes. And I did quite a few of those fiddlers contests. And back in my about fourteen years old, I won the North Alabama State Fiddlers Championship. I got a picture of me up there now, you know, and with a little place in the Florence Times where I won the where I won that, you know. And then I got to tell you too, also. Uh, about that time, about, about that same time, I was, of course, I was playing with a little local bands there, Eddie McDougal and the Southern Playboys in Florence. We had a radio show like every Saturday at 12 o'clock. And I was playing fiddle and, and, uh, and so anyway, during that time, we was doing the radio shows, we, we, down in Sheffield, Alabama, it was right across the Tennessee River, right, right across the river from Florence. They, uh, uh, Hank Williams was booked in there, and the, and the Drifting Cowboy I was booked into that little, little place over there in, in, in Sheffield. A little, uh, it was, it was like a little hall, you know? And, uh, and, and so anyway, we were, uh, the band guy I was working with was, they wanted him to front the band for Hank Williams, you know, when, when he came in, so we'd have something to go on in front before he came on, you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, we did, we did, and he, we was fronting the show, and, and we started playing, and we got uh, we got uh, got to go and playing in there, and then, but we kind of waited waiting on the Hank and the boys to show up. They was running late, so we had to, we had to play a little bit longer than we normally would have, you know. But it worked out good, and and I got to meet Hank Williams that day, uh, Hank Senior. Wow. And and he <laughs> and I got to meet him. I go down, and, and so he got there before we went off, and he heard some of our music, you know, that we was playing. He's down in the dressing room. And I went down, uh, and I got to meet him, and I said, I'm sure a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Williams. He said, I heard you up there, son, on that fiddle. He said, you did a good job. And I said, well, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> wow. And that was that was a really great time in my life, you know, that I got to meet Hank, you know. And Jerry Rivers, his fiddle player, you know, I, I liked his fiddle player playing a lot, and I, I listened to him play fiddle a lot, and I kind of took a, uh, listen to his style, and he he was a uh, he was a good fiddle player, and so it just it just went on from there, and I just kept playing fiddle, and, and I wanted to play uh, earlier than that after after doing the fiddlers conventions when I first started when I won the thirty dollars I wanted to play guitar some too, so they found me an old Gene Autry guitar somewhere there, and somebody had it for sale, and 
I started playing around on that. And, and so then then I just started playing guitar more, and, and I play guitar and fiddle more, you know, together. So that's the way kind of it, it ended up. You know, I, I stayed with fiddle and guitar. And then back oh, back when we was doing the radio shows, though, I did play a little steel guitar. Hmm. I played little lap steel. They didn't have no pedals back then. Just that old, old uh, uh, Jerry, what you call him in Nashville, he he was such a great steel player. Anyway, I, 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 I liked his playing, and I, I played steel for a little while on the radio. I, I, every once in a while I play uh, steel on a couple of numbers on the radio show, you know. And when I finally, finally played that for a while, but I got off that and kind of stuck to the guitar and fiddle and mandolin. I play a little mandolin. I played that on some Jerry Sessions back on the early days and mandolin and on a few little tunes. And, but on I played fiddle on all of his country stuff, you know, and guitar on a lot of the, some of the country stuff and some of the rock, old rock and roll stuff too. So the, the instruments that you have played at one time or another would be guitar, fiddle, steel guitar, and a little mandolin. Anything else? Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's about it. That was my, that was my string. <laughs> that was my string instruments. I just, uh, stuck with it, you know. I tried to get the best I could on each one of them, you know, and, and I, I just liked those four instruments. Now, the, the story about meeting the great Hank Williams, that's just incredible. But tell us, who were the favorite artists of yours that you heard on the radio? Who, who up there, who out there was, your favorites you know back uh, back in those days yes sir yeah i'd say hank was one of them yeah hank hank was one of them i got uh you know and then they got so many come after hank they got uh they had uh way up pierce you know those those old country guys carl smith farron young marty robbins eddie uh Eddie, uh, what's his name? He's living Eddie in Tennessee. Arnold? Eddie Arnold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie was, uh, one of my favorites too. And, and just, uh, just, uh, the, the country people back then, you know, when they're doing the old Opry. Uh, a little story here, I tell you, when, when I was growing up, we had, a, we, we had an old battery radio. You know, back then, didn't have no electricity. We had, a, had an old battery radio and we had a little, one little room in the house and, it was me and my brother and two sisters. We had four four children. My mom and dad did. And so, uh, anyway, I I I was I got to listen. And I, on Saturday night, when the Grand Ole Opry would come on, would would get the old, get that radio turned on at a certain time when it comes on, and we'd all gather around in there. And sometimes it'd be be cold to be in the winter time too. Sometimes we'd all get close to the stove and close to that radio too. And so when the, when it would come on. And that grand old opera come on, boy, we'd all get close and we'd start listening to all that and I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. And boy, we get to listen to it and all of a sudden, you know, maybe it started getting a little weaker because the battery was getting, mm. going down a little bit on it. We'd all get closer and closer. <laughs> 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 and that's the way I, I love to listen to grand old opera back then. I mean, it was George D. Hayes, the solemn old judge. You know, he was, he brought to, he always introduced the grand old opera and it was just, Amazing. Kitty Wells and, oh, you know, Loretta Lynn and just all those uh, stars. Tammy Wynette and, and everybody. That was later than Hank and them, you know, but it, it, I, I listened to all of it, you know, and just just enjoyed it. And that's what, what I grew up with. And that's where I've always been is, is I love the classic country and the original rock and roll, you know. <laughs> So your parents, they you would say that they were encouraging of you pursuing music. Absolutely. Uh, they were my mother and daddy. And also, i, I got to tell you, my one sister now, i got two sisters, but, but I only have one alive now. But uh, my, my, you know, my older sister, Cornelia, she was a good piano player. I mean, she taught me a lot. Her and mother taught me on the mandolin, but she taught me a lot when I play, I'd play guitar. Me and her would jam together some, you know, and she'd learn me these songs, and I'd learn the, the chords on the guitar. She'd learn me that, you know, and I'd, that's where I learned a lot of it. I mean, she was a big help to me. Cornelia is her first name, and Cornelia, and then my other sister's Betty Jean, and my brother was James. 
and we just, uh, but that, uh, we played all, you know, back then we played little shows, little talent shows and stuff around Florence and stuff, anything, you know, that little group I was playing with, and we'd uh, play play all those little things, you know, <laughs> and it was, but I'd look forward to that radio show every Saturday, you know, and 12 o'clock, 12 to 1 o'clock, and we'd get to play a lot of songs, you know, and, and it was great. And you were in a group, the Go Go Boys. Right. I'm hoping you can tell us about that. What kind of music did you all do? Well, that started off as it's a uh, kind of the old country and and and, and a new uh, new thing. You know, you remember the people put bands like the Platters and and all those type groups like that. Well, we we they formed a group uh, called first called the Go Go Boys. We joined Junior Thompson and the Go Go Boys. He was the lead singer back at that time. And so we, that was in Florence. That's before I went out and, uh, on the road anywhere. You know, I was still, I was still in school, just about to finish high school later on, you know. But anyway, uh, we, we got together and there's me and my first two cousins, Raymond Lovelace and Jimmy Lovelace and, and, uh, Bobby Cox was a drummer, our first drummer and, and Don Moore was a, uh, singer, one of the lead singers too, but we, we, we played a uh, little, little sock hops there around Florence, you know, little things like that, and it got to where it got hold of my aunt, Christine. She was a professional musician in Birmingham, and she played on a lot of things down there, a lot of, a lot of shows, and she got us booked into a little, a little, a little club down there one time called the Belvedere Club in Birmingham. And so we went down there and started playing, and when Junior, Made a couple of shows, Junior Thompson. But later, after he played a little while, he kind of got out of it and left. And then, of course, Don was our lead singer then, Don Moore. But my aunt got us that, that show and got us to work in there. We'd work, come down on the weekend and work like Friday and Saturday. And then drive down there and then drive back home and make us just a little bit of money to pay expenses, I guess, you know. But anyway, enough to eat on and everything. But she got us some more jobs later on with a Big radio announcers Joe Rumor and Dan Brennan back at that time were big disc jockeys back in Birmingham, and she knew them. And so we and uh, Duke Rumor he he had some little sock hop things he'd do on on Saturday evenings, and so he hired us for that. So we play some of that uh, with him, and and just doing those type of things and worked the country club. We worked a couple of country clubs, and there was five of us and. And then later on, we just kept going and, and we started doing it, you know, for a full-time thing. I, after I graduated from high school, 18, and, I, and then for a little while, I went to Memphis and I played on the uh, Husband Son Records in 1955. I played me and Bill Cantrell. He was a fiddle player. And we played twin fiddles on a, a lady out of Florence, Maggie Sue Wembley. So... uh we played twin fiddles on that, and we had a steel player, Stan Kessler, and Dexter Johnson was uh, the bass player, and he's the one that was part of the Muscle Shoals, one that had the first, actually, studio in Muscle Shoals at his house, Dexter Johnson. And then Quentin Clonch was a guitar player. And so anyway, during that session, well, I, uh, we, we uh, they made some pictures, and I, they, they, they're out there now somewhere, and I, I've got one, but... And that picture was, uh, me and uh, was uh, actually started off in the back row with Sam Phillips, Quentin Clunch, and Dexter Johnson. And there was one guitar player that they, they couldn't figure out who he was. They had a question mark by him. But then Stan Kessler was on steel and Bill Cantrell was on the fiddle and I was on the fiddle. And, but they, we got a picture of that, you know, 55, 1955. Hmm. And, uh, Sam, Sam Phillips was in there. And me and Sam were second cousins. Yeah? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, that's right. Cause I, <laughs> I think the way it is, my daddy's daddy and his mother, Sam's mother, were brothers and sisters. Interesting. So daddy was first cousins with him, with Sam. And I'm, I was second cousin. Your your music royalty. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sam did well. I'm telling you, he was he he did a big thing. He had a lot of top artists, as we know, 
Jerry and Elvis, Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, and uh, Charlie Rich, who, who uh, he's had so many, you know. Oh, yeah. And you became involved in the the Jerry Lee Lewis world through, it was Linda Gale Lewis that you met first, right? Yes, and that, now that's, that goes back to the, the where the Go-Go 58 was working those places. We changed our name to the the Five Jets. Uh-huh. Oh, and we changed it from the Go-Go Boys to the Five Jets, and it was me and my two cousins, Raymond and Jimmy, and then Don Moore and Bobby Cox was the drummer. When we, and we started, uh, we had a little booking agent out of Georgia, Atlanta, Ross Russell. And he booked us uh, some shows down, he booked like the Azalea Grill in Mobile, and Gus Stevens Supper Club in Biloxi, Mississippi, the Old Dutch Inn in Panama City. But And, and we, we worked with the Jets. Uh, we worked together for about 10, 11 years. And 64, I guess 62, 63, 62 maybe, we had, had been traveling on the road a good bit to the Jets, and we worked with Shreveport, Louisiana, and this guy had the Stork Supper Club there, and they had three different rooms, and it's at the showroom in, in the middle, and and then and, and the show bar was up in the front, where you stand up, a, had a stage up in the middle of the bar, and so we he hired us we to play for a couple of weeks. Ross Russell booked us in there with the Five Jets, and we played all. We had our own show. I mean, we did comedy, we did uh, group singing, and we did. Uh, uh, we, we, all our instruments, my, see, my first cousin Raymond played saxophone, played guitar, Jimmy Lovelace, my other cousin played upright bass and electric bass later. But, uh, and then, uh, Bobby Cox, of course, left now. He left us when we left, uh, like doing the, the southern clubs and stuff. He left and he went into a business by himself and we hired another drummer by, from our hometown, Ed Goodwin. So he was our, uh, drummer then so we there was five of us that played the, the Stork Supper Club we played there for four years after we he wanted to come in for two weeks and then after we started drawing the people <laughs> in so he kept us for four, 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 four years a little, maybe a little more but anyway after after we finished our stay there you know which he uh, this guy in Monroe uh, it, was, it was like a like a hundred miles from Shreveport he had a place called the Rendezvous Club, Johnny Johnson. And so he, he heard, he, he heard of us, you know, he said he wanted to hire us. So he did. And, uh, we stayed at the, the uh, Rendezvous. It was a nice supper club. All the clubs we were playing was nice clubs. And, uh, so he, he hired us. And, uh, so during that time, we were there. After we'd been there, I think it was a year, year or two or something like that. Well, anyway, Jerry Lee's sister, they lived in, her, their home was Faraday, Louisiana, about 80 miles from uh, Monroe. So she, I guess, heard about this club, and so she got a hold of the club owner. And wanted, she was wanting to work on the weekends. She was real young back then, you know, and so he uh, she, he came, I guess, busy with her, him, and he hired her, like, on uh, a few weekends, you know, and and she'd sing. We'd, we'd back her up while she, on her songs, you know, the, the Five Jets would. So anyway, and during during that time, well, Jerry was on the road. That was about uh, that was about, that was about sixty six, I guess, somewhere around sixty five, sixty six. So anyway, Jerry was traveling some at that time, and you know we'd already had a whole lot of shaking out and all that, uh, uh, great balls of fire and stuff. You know, big 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 records. <laughs> mm-hmm. So anyway, one day he was booked, one night he was booked on the weekend in the same town as us that we were playing in, you know, an East Side Club. He was booked in there to do a late show. I think he had an 11 o'clock show or something there he was going to play. But anyway, uh, Linda Gale told her about this group she was working with, and she said, you need to come out and see these guys. What we did, we did a lot of group singing, and we'd do different, you know, some of the oldest platter songs. And some songs, a few of our own that we didn't have a lot recorded at the time. Anyway, we, 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 he did all that. We did all that kind of stuff. And me and my cousin, Raymond, we had a banjo whack. We, 
we played together on a banjo and had had a black light and had her hat on and the glove, white gloves and it comes to a point where we're going to somebody cut the switch off and the lights would go out and it would just be nothing but our hands and that our hat hands showing you know hmm. with the lighting and and we had that we playing uh, the world's waiting for the sunrise uh, on the banjo but then when she told Jerry about our show you know well he she wanted to come out so she got him to come out and see our show. And he came out to the rendezvous club to see the five guests. You know, she told him about us and told him she needed to see us. So he came out. It was him and his road manager and his uh, security guy. They came out, and here here we was getting on the stage, and here was Jerry Lee sitting on the front row. <laughs> 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 that, that, I mean, that was, you talk about something, I said, oh, wow, we, we better... We better we better be on 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 it tonight, you know. <laughs> so we 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 said uh, we went in and we did our show. Well, Linda, we we backed her up first, and she did her show, and she did a really good job as usual. And then we started on our show, and we started doing that banjo act, and and, and then and then I got on the fiddle in a little while, and I, and I played a fiddle, I played a fiddle tune, and and I think Orange Blossom Special or something like that. It was real fast. Anyway, he was—he looked like he was enjoying it. And later on, he told me, he said, if you're going to get on the piano, I was fixing to get on you. <laughs> 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 he said, you're doing too good here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all got y'all too. And he wanted to hire the whole band. Mm. <laughs> he wanted to hire the whole band. But at that time, I was the boys were, we'd been on the road for quite a while with our wives. And, it's, and now, now we, had, we had children. Some of the boys had children. At that time, though, I was, I was the only one that was actually free. He said, well, he said, and, and I, I talked to the boys. He said, I talked, uh, we talked to each other, you know. And they said, and they said, well, they, they kind of figured that we'd been on the road so long and they was going to not stay there, stay together too much longer. And so, uh, and I told him, I just, you know, I told him what he said, you know, and I, I talked to him, and we all talked to him about it, and they said, he said, well, you know, if, we all, if, if other boys can't make it, can he? I, I sure would like to have you, you know, and, 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 but he wanted to hire the whole band and they just, at the time they just wasn't able to travel like, you know. And hmm. so, uh, anyway, uh, the rest is history. I, I, I stayed there to, when they wanted to, until about, uh, another couple of months, I guess, and, and, uh, three months and, uh, and I, I left in, well, in 67. May of '67, I went with Jerry, and, and I talked to the boys about it. And I wouldn't, you know, and wasn't gonna let let them hang But they said, "Would no?" They encouraged me to go ahead. They said, "Kenny, we'd we'd love to go with you too, but with our family and everything, it's just gonna be hard on us right now, you know." Hmm. And so I said, "Well, I said, you know, I I don't want to mess mess our band up." And they said, "That's okay. So we're not gonna stay together that much longer." Anyway, they did stay together about another year and a half, I think, or something like that, and. Anyway, but I, I went with him in May of '67, and and uh, I've been with him 54 years. Of course, we're now we're, we're we're at idle right now. You know, we had a stroke yeah. back in '19, and then I had a left knee replacement. To, at the, our last show was Greenville, South Carolina, in February of 2019, and Jerry. Right after that, he he had a he had a stroke, and then I had a left knee replacement, and and then in all in July. I was having a little problems with coughing up some clear substance, and, and so I, I, I got, got a hold of my primary doctor, and she said, "Hey, we want to take an X-ray here, you know." And hmm. So she did. I, I said, it's "My neck." I said, "My neck was hurting in the back there, you know." She said, "Maybe we need to take an, an X-ray of your neck and, and shoulder, you know." And so they did, and she took an X-ray, and it, it got down far further enough to to it got uh, uh, my lung. It got my my lungs, and I had a spot on my left lung, and I had it. Make a long story short, I, I had it checked out and went to the doctor that they told me to go to. They did a, a scan and, and a biopsy and went down my throat. Sure enough, there was a I had I had a spot on my left upper lobe of my left lung, and it was cancer. Hmm. And so and so. Uh, I was another making long story short, it goes on forever, but I, I got a hold, then I got a hold of my surgeon and she looked at the x-rays and she said, I'll tell you what, I think we should do. I think we should go in there and take it out. 
So August August the seventh, twenty nineteen, I went in the the hospital here in Nashville, St. Thomas, St. Thomas Hospital, and had a, had a great lady doctor, Dr. Tammy Baxter. So she went in, and they did a four and a half hour surgery, and she and she took out they took out my left upper lobe of my left lung, so I don't have a, got a, I've got a half of a lung left there. But she got it. She said she got it all, and she took all the lymph nodes around it and got it out. And uh, and since then, I've had uh, good reports. I've got reports. But uh, let me go back a little bit. After after we got the, through the surgery, she wanted me to get a hold of a uh, oncology doctor, Doctor Bauer. And uh, he, I, I, she wanted me to see him because he might he might want me to have a little chemo. And I went to him and visited with him. He's a nice doctor. He said he encouraged me that we need to go do four weeks, this four uh, series of uh, chemo, four weeks, four four series of it, you know. And so I did that and uh, got through the chemo, and then I've had some scans since then, four or five scans, and got another one coming up March the 1st. But thank the Lord, I've had had good reports, uh, Paul. Thank God. Thank the Lord, man, I tell yeah. you, I, Absolutely, and so anyway, after that, when I, after we left the rendezvous, and I went with Jerry. Well, I started traveling with Jerry all the time. We're playing out in Texas, playing them honky tonks in Texas. You know, sixty-seven minutes. I started with him in May, and uh, we played the the first show we played was Watch Actually Texas, I believe it was, and and the first play that might be my first gig with him. You know, <laughs> and and I. Was, and I was standing right where I always stand today. That's where I stand on the right side of him, <laughs> right, not right by him. But anyway, that that one night, I, I I got taught a lesson. So anyway, I was on the one of the because I was watching so close. You know, I didn't want to do my best job, which I was hanging in there, but I I, I, I was cautious of it, you know. And anyway, he when he his last number is always a whole lot of shaking. Back then, he's always doing a whole lot of shaking with his closing number. So anyway, I was still standing there, and so when he got into it really good, boy, he was standing up on the piano, playing the piano, and all of a sudden, he kicked that stool back, and he got me between my knees. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, whoa. I said, boy, I, I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then and now, and from now on, when he does a whole lot of shaking, you always see me move back a couple of feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so anyway, we we played those clubs. You know, Paul, we played those all those. There's so many night clubs out there in Texas. You know, San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth, and uh, Albuquerque, and all them places we played there. Fort Panther Hall and da- uh, Dallas and Dewey Groom Ballroom and and uh, all all those. Fort, uh, all, all of them was great country, old country clubs, you know. I mean, not country clubs, but bars, <laughs> you know. And that, that's what was going on back then. So, anyway, we, we, uh, I know we would start out uh, on that circuit. Sometimes we'd play twenty five, twenty six days out a month. Hmm. We'd work, uh, and, and he had he had purchased a sixty six black long Lincoln limousine. <laughs> And, 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 and me and the road manager and his security guy was, was the ones that went with him. And that we'd all take our time about driving, see, and, and to the clubs. And he, and so he, we would take off like sometimes we'd have like a 400 mile, uh, we'd play club one night, get back and get some rest, a little sleep at the hotel and get up the next day and drive 400 miles and get there in time to, to, to play another show, you know, and sometimes we was doing two shows back then. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was rolling. It was rolling. But uh, what we would do, I got, I got to tell you this: at the end of the tour, the last show of the, you know of the month, you know, that we played, we uh, I would I, I would pull my driving time maybe a, the day before, and and when we get ready to, after the show, we would take off and start to head towards Memphis. We might be 500, 400, 500 miles away, you know. And so what Jerry wanted me to do, he, we'd, I'd get in the back seat with Jerry, and he wanted me to get, me get my fiddle, and he got a flat-top guitar, and we'd play and sing all the way into Memphis. 
<laughs> I play my fiddle, and, and he he sings songs that you know, we've been we've done. I mean, hundreds of songs we sing. <laughs> he sang. I play fiddle with him, you know. And we we had the greatest time. But that's what we'd we'd, we'd play all the way in, into Memphis. <laughs> we'd get there and then just just be tired out and go to bed and sleep for ten or twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> And be off for maybe a week, maybe off for a few days, and then we'd hit it again. <laughs> well, oh, me. this is going back quite a few years, but can you remember your first thoughts, your first impression when you met Jerry Lee Lewis? Oh, yeah. I, I was. We were all great with Jerry fans, but I never dreamed I'd be with him or I even met him, you know. Like, like in Birmingham, you know, we was, we was down there in 1956, you know. Playing, playing clubs, and we're singing great balls of fire and a whole lot of shaking, and 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 singing his music. You went again. I was singing his music, and then you know, and never dreaming that that I'd be with him, and even seen him on the, watching our show with the, the, the Rendezvous Club. <laughs> that was just that was just a, a big part of our life, you know. And he's like a brother to me, Jerry. We've been been really close to each other. He really is. I love him, you know. That's great. Well, what has been the best thing about that gig, playing and being the band leader in Jerry Lee Lewis's band? Well, you know, it's it's been rewarding, and and I've been through a lot of musicians. You know, at times, you know, you know, some some drummer or something they'll. They always uh, get tired or something. They'll they'll leave. We'll get another drummer or get another bass player, and that you know. So I've I've I went through a lot of bass players and and, and drummers, you know. Right. But it was just a uh, rewarding, uh, you know. And I, I, you know, try to keep them when they start with him. You know, I try to maybe help them. You know the songs we're gonna be he's doing. You know, and you need to teach him the chords, some of them, and and, and just just have rehearsals. You know. Well, we were talking about Linda Gale Lewis a little bit earlier. You were telling us how would you describe her? Well, Linda's very talented. She's she she travels now a lot, or was traveling a lot in Europe, and uh, you know since this COVID nineteen. She was traveling. She was traveling. She was working a lot over there back in 2019. I mean, 2018, 19, or, or 17. Oh, a few years. She was. She was working over there a lot, traveling all over the Europe. And she was. Uh, she's been very successful over there. And I. Well, she now this COVID kind of kind of shut everybody down to a certain extent. You know. Yeah. So, but she's still, I mean, she's, I'm sure she's still trying to work a few shows, and, and when she can, you know, when it's, it's kind of opening up a little bit, but uh, I'm sure she's uh, still trying to to work some, and I'm hoping, I guess she's hoping too, to get to go back to Europe if it ever clears up, you know, so she got a lot of fans over there, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't mind editorializing a little. I will tell, uh, and some people know this, I have some listeners of this show who are real big Jerry Lee Lewis fans. And sometimes I, I talk to them and I've said a few times that some of the greatest records that have ever been made have been Jerry Lee Lewis records. Just great. And uh, I'm hoping you can tell us you've played on so, so many of them. What would you say? Could you pick a favorite? Uh, let's see. Let me see. You know, get my mind straight here. Uh, she 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 even woke me up to say goodbye. Yeah, that's one of one of my favorites. And uh, touching home. And uh, and all the good is gone. And uh, Chantilly lace. <laughs> good one. Yeah. And. Uh, Sweet Georgia Brown. I played fiddle on all those things, and and uh, Mickey Newberry wrote a song for Jerry, which I love. Called uh, "I Wish I Was 18 Again." <laughs> you 
And that really hit home. He, in the lyrics, he said, would a 49 Mercury still be out of sight? <laughs> I said, boy that, boy, that takes me back when I, when I was rolling up and down the streets in Florence, Alabama, and I had a, a 50 model Ford. And I, I said, boy, I'm, that takes me back. Would, would a 49 Mercury still be out of sight? <laughs> <laughs> but he said, it'll never be that way again. He manages in in his singing to capture so many sentiments like that. Like, you know, there, there's so much in these records. I'll tell you one that I just love. It's one of the fairly recent ones. I think it was from 95, 1995. I love that record that came out called Young Blood. Oh, yeah. Great record. Yeah, that, that was a good record. Yeah, underrated, I think. Underrated, absolutely. Yeah, and you wrote a few songs on there, or co-wrote a few. Yeah, I did. Uh, Out of my mind. Yeah, yeah. One and uh, let's see, what is the other one? Oh, uh, well, mercy, Paul! I can't can't think of my own song. <laughs> I got so much on my mind. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's see. I got one. Let's see. Uh, age, age is just a number. Let's see. Uh, well, maybe I, I may have to call you back later on. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you mentioned Out of My Mind, and that's a that's a song that I like, and I know you wrote that one. That was a solo write, right? Yeah, that's right. Can you remember what inspired it? Uh, yeah, it, 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 uh, the, the old bar, bar songs were going on. Then, uh, the, you know, it's just a... The, the jukebox is playing, you know, and the people out the, the drinking, uh, drinking and everything, you know. And I, I said, out of my mind, you know. I said, there's been a lot of people out of their mind at <laughs> <Some> bars. <laughs> so I wrote it. I was sitting, I was sitting here drinking, thinking of you, thinking about the things that we used to do. But this old bar ain't bad for a man all along. But it's better than nothing when you want to get stoned out of my mind <laughs> great, great song do, do you still write a lot uh i had not a good while now you know since this covid stuff i had uh, haven't wrote anything but uh we we wrote some things uh later on uh uh let's this this song well let me see now you know, you, you get a little catalog, and you, you hadn't seen them in a while, and you forget what you've wrote. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say I'm trying to think of one here. Anyway, I'll, I'll think of maybe I'll think of before we get through here. I wanted to ask about uh, working with this great producer. He was a guest on this show, and it created a great reaction, which I was so honored to interview Jerry Kennedy, one of the great record men. Oh, yes, dear. He lives close to me here. Tell us about working with him. What was that like? He was he was a great producer. He he produced pretty much all of Jerry's uh, country hits, you know, and uh, and he, he's just a nice guy. He's originally from Louisiana, but he's, he's been in Nashville for many, many years now. But we record with Jerry and uh, get all the people that, you know, that's talking about Jerry, 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 of course, he was a good guitar player, too. Jerry Candy was. And, oh, uh, yeah. And he, but he, he did, he was a good producer. He, and he just produced some good, good records on Jerry. I mean, he, uh, 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 he would, would always have, uh, Bob Moore on the bass, Buddy Harmon on the drums, Ray Eddington on the guitar, and, uh, uh, steel guitar. We had uh, Lord Green and uh, quite quite a few steel guitar players. Well, you mentioned some some great musicians. Pig Robbins. Pig Robbins, right? Pig Robbins, Buddy Harmon, Bob Moore. Has there been someone in the studio, a musician that has impressed you the most? Uh, let me see. You know, it'd be tough. To say, but uh, I guess uh, Buddy on the drums and, the, and 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 Bob on the bass. I mean, they they were a team, you know. Yeah. 
and Pig, and Pig, and of course he played organ when Jerry was recording, you know, because he, most of the time he played organ. Right. But um, what a great piano player. I mean, he, I mean, he's just, just a wonderful piano player, too. We just lost Pig Robbins, unfortunately. Really? Yeah, he passed away uh, just just recently. I'm you sorry know, to be the one I'll to. Do that. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm I'm just trying to think. Did I hear that? I don't think I know Bob passed away. Yeah. And Buddy Harmon passed away. Yes, sir. But P- P- Pig Robbins was. I mean, it was just. It's pretty pretty uh pretty new news. He played on ain't no telling how many artists oh, he man. played with. All that stuff with George Jones, those licks he had on the piano, you know. Great player. And I got to tell you too, you know, the people that Jerry has influenced on piano is amazing. Over in Europe, I mean, people, uh, young boys are just coming up all over the place playing Jerry Lee style. I mean, they just yeah. just playing just like him. I mean, he's influenced so many people. Yeah, it's true. You know, and there's there's a plenty of people who they they don't hesitate when you ask them what you know who who influenced your piano playing. Where do you get that from? And they say Jerry Lee, Jerry right. Lee, or, or Fats. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, Fats was a great great artist. Uh, we played a lot of shows with him. I bet. And Chuck Berry and Little Richard, we we do the a European tour called The Legends of Rock and Roll. <laughs> I bet you that was great. <laughs> it was great shows, man. We just I've been so blessed to do what I've done and meet the people I've met all over the world, you know, and like in Europe, I mean, those fans over there and here too, they they, they could tell me more where we're going to be playing than I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'd say, "What, what, where, 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 where are we going next?" And I talk. Somebody called me, and one of the fans or something said, "Y'all gonna be in so and so?" I said, "We are." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Thanks for letting me know." <laughs> True fans. True fans. I mean, he here in the U.S. and in Europe. He got some wonderful fans, man. I get calls from Sweden, uh, Germany, Holland, England. France, uh, all the time. This guy from Sweden called me just a couple of days ago. That's something. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, they 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 they're, they're dear fans, man. You know, all of them. You were mentioning about you know, the, in addition to working with Jerry Lee, and in addition to working in recording studios. You've gotten to share the bill and and meet these people like Little Richard and Fats Domino and Chuck Berry. Has there been a great that you've worked with or or just met backstage that really really blew you away? Uh, well, I tell you, the funny is, Little Richard was uh, was so funny. <laughs> uh, he was a he was a funny guy, you know, easy going. And, uh, of course, he was, he had his wild moments, you know, back those days, you know, like what they all did, you know. But, uh, Fats and I was another, uh, another one that was a very humble person. Hmm. He was a very humble person, Fats was, you know. I believe that. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Chuck, Chuck was, uh, uh he was good, and, but he was, he was, he was a little bit, you know, harder to get used to than Richard, but, but he was, he was great, I mean, but you know, he he just kind of more or less didn't hang around too long after he got off, you know, of the shows. You know, and that's where we, you know, we'd get to visit with them, you know, a lot. You know, but I visited a lot with Chuck too, you know. Hmm. I watched some great songs he wrote, huh? Oh, no kidding. <laughs> uh, I think he, he uh, called him the Hank Williams of rock and roll. I mean, you know, he, he was like Hank was Chuck was like a. Like a Hank Williams in his field, you know. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. You know, we're, we're writing what he wrote. You know, it's like Hank has wrote so many standards. You know, like Chuck wrote so many standard rock and roll. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm curious. Did you ever encounter Sinatra? You know, I never did get to meet Frank, but I love his music. I love his music, and so did Jerry. Really. 
Yeah, and uh, another guy, uh, I like, I like, uh, yeah, I sure like Frank. Uh, what he's singing, Dean Martin, and, and I like Dean Martin. And, uh, and Jerry, Jerry liked all, all that kind of stuff too. He liked the, uh, the, some of that pop music, you know. Oh, yeah. I always felt that Jerry Lee Lewis is one of the great singers of a lot of, a lot of those old, those old tunes, like when he does Over the Rainbow, he really, he does it in his own way, and he always nails it. Oh, absolutely. It's the way he phrases his songs. I mean, it just, uh, can't nobody do it like him. <laughs> well spoken. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he, he just, uh, he just, uh, he'd get in, in in the studio, you know, and he said, you know, He'd, he'd listen to him uh, some before he got there, maybe a little bit. You know, he said, "I don't like to do. I don't like to do these songs over no more than one take." <laughs> you know, he said, "You start, so you start doing, uh, get over two or three takes. Now you do, you might, you might lose it, might lose something." You know. Yeah, I, I can see that. And, and that's what he tried. He he got a lot of songs on his first take. Hmm. <laughs> well. I'm curious about this. There was talk uh, a, a couple years about, ago about a gospel album. Yeah. You know, after Jerry had his stroke, well, uh, a guy got Jerry out of uh, L.A. He was to get, wanted, wanted to do this gospel album on him, and, and he did. And, uh, and But what happened was Jerry done had his stroke, you know, and he, uh, this was 20, 2019 and maybe the first part of 2020. But he, he, his, you know, he got Jerry's right side. He got his arm and his hand, and his uh, maybe down his leg a little. You know, the stroke did. Yeah. And that right hand he hadn't been able to use. You know, but he, this 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 is while he was going through rehab and some too. But he, we, uh, the guy got it together. He said he still wanted to do this record, uh, this gospel album. So he. Uh, he, he he got it together and got it, got all the musicians together and and Jerry finally agreed to do it. But he uh, I don't think he thought he he wasn't going and in the very start he wasn't going to play piano. You know he's just going to so and he would we, we recorded here in Nashville at Bear Hill at T Bone Burnett's studio. Oh, you remember T Bone? Oh yeah. Yeah, we he got a studio over there and that's where that's where we went in and recorded it. And Jerry was, uh, of course, they naturally had a piano set up with a mic and everything. And he wasn't going to play, and he kind of, he wasn't going to get over there. Said, but he's, that's where he usually did, had set the piano and play himself and sing, you know, when he's recording, you know. But anyway, he, he, we got over there, and then finally he started with his left hand a little bit. He started doing a little bit with his left, because he hadn't done anything, you know. And he started tuning just a little bit with his right hand, and he... He he done he done some with his right, a little with his right hand. I don't know how much they got out of it now, but I'm sure they 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 got what they could get, you know. Anyway, the, he, he sing he did about twelve the old gospel songs, "How Fly Away," and "The Old Rugged Cross," and and all all the old ones, you know. Oh yeah, so so those m- might uh, see the 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 light of day, or or we might. We might hear that record at some point. Yeah, they they tried to they did a a big interview type thing. What what it is is about his life and stuff. What you call it? I can't think of the name. They did a like uh, a documentary. Documentary. That's it. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> the thing about got so much on my mind here. Yeah, they they did a doc. They they had already done a documentary on him, and they 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 were, the talk is to, to put the documentary in the the gospel album together. Ah. They do it, put it out at the same time together, you know. But now we haven't heard anything yet. They, they just talked about this fall, but I haven't heard anything yet. If I find out when it does come out, I'll, I'll call you. Oh, beautiful. We will, you uh, know, we'll be looking forward to hearing. <laughs> yeah, I'll be uh, waiting to hear that too, you know. That's some Nashville musicians and they had, I played on it uh, and me and me and James Burton you know James who played with Elvis played guitar oh yeah James Burton me and James have been going back since the, the the five Jets days I've been knowing him that long we, we're we looking forward to hearing that record definitely oh yeah I am too I've, 
uh, you know, and then we didn't get to stay around here here the after it's mixed or anything. You know, I haven't, I haven't heard it, so I'm anxious to hear how it came out. You know. So how is Jerry Lee Lewis these days? Well, you know, he's he's in good spirits, Paul. He's uh, you know he's at his home there in Memphis and in the edge of Mississippi there, and and he uh, he uh, he's. He's still going through a little rehab he, with his hand a little bit. He's just he's he's doing better with his hand, and 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 he's still going through a little therapy every day with his arm and stuff. But he, I went down and visited with him now two or three times, you know. And matter of fact, uh, on his uh, was it his 85th birthday? Yeah, I think we went down and and uh, down to his uh, farm down there. They they was going to throw a good little bash for him, you know. Yeah. And uh, when he was uh, when he turned 85, I believe. Uh, and so, uh, they, they got people lined up and here, they got Mickey Gilly to come in, got Jimmy Swaggart to come to the farm and, and we, we got our band together, me and the drummer and, uh, and the bass player and, and, and Jimmy, uh, of course, Jimmy, uh, Jerry was there and he really enjoyed it. He said, no, we're just smiling, but of course he didn't sing or play anything, but Mickey did a song and, and Jimmy Swaggart did a song and, and, uh, Linda Gale did a song. And a lot of tributes from huge stars sharing their love for Jerry Lee. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they had a lot, a lot of video that day. Was the people just calling, uh, getting on and wishing him happy birthday, you know, and and everything. Chris Christopherson, everybody. Drew Carey from the, uh, on the TV every day with the prices right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just so many people. Call, you know, like President Clinton calling. I mean, uh, not call, but they, they was wishing him happy birthday on video, you know. Right. <laughs> well, I can tell you that I've enjoyed this interview so much, Mr. Lovelace. It's been, it's been great. I like to end the show. I have like, it's, I, I like to call it like a lightning round. They're real quick questions okay. that will close the show. Just to, the first thing that comes to your mind. How do you define good music? Uh, let's see. Oh, by, the, by, by, by ear. By ear? You said by ear? Yeah, by my ear. I just, I, I have a good listening ear and I, I, I define it for, for what I can hear, what I hear. Good answer. And what is the best thing about being Kenny Lovelace? Oh, the best thing with being me, I just thank the Lord that uh, he's let me get through this world and, and the travels that we made with Jerry and and uh, what, I, what I've accomplished through all that and just, I, I couldn't ask for more. Hmm. What does God mean to you? Oh, he's, he's, he's number one. He's, uh, he's uh, the Lord of our lives and, and I've, I've praise him every day of my life that he's brought me through this cancer, lung cancer and he's brought, brought us, me and Jerry through all the travels we made I was telling Jerry one day, he's brought us through all these airplane flights that we've been on and got us back home safe hmm. Well, Mr. Lovelace thank you so much for joining us on the Paul Leslie Hour this has been a real pleasure for me I'm, I'm really thrilled that we got the chance to do this, this is better than any than any pot of coffee that I could have. <laughs> well, I I just say one thing. I'd encourage the people to listen to the Paul Leslie Hour because he's, he's he you're you're carrying the music on for us, Paul. God bless you for that. Thank you, thank you. Well, God bless you for it anyway. Without you saying that. Oh well, yeah. And God God bless you for for asking me to do it. And and and, and that don't mean we don't talk to each other again we won't we're gonna stay in touch yes sir in fact I, I hope we get a chance to meet face to face sometime that would be good you know if we was if we was traveling playing again i'd i'd, I'd, I'd have you to come out to the show and just bring you backstage and just visit with you <laughs> but we're not doing it anymore but we can you never know you never say never you know but never say never <laughs> that's right but uh anyway it's just uh uh, we if, we sure can stay uh, in touch by phone, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll have to have you back on. That sounds good, and maybe maybe I'll uh, remember some of the things that I forgot. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> you did great. But anyway, take care of yourself and your family, and I wish you all the best. And take care of yourself. Stay safe, 
and God richly bless you. Same to you. All right, sir. Until next time. Okay. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you for stopping by today. If you enjoyed our program, consider telling a friend about it. The Paul Leslie Hour is made possible through people just like you. So you want to keep the show going, right? Go to thepaulleslie.com. That's thepaulleslie.com. Click on Support the Show. And thanks to everyone who contributes. Performance of the intro music is courtesy of John Primerano, the entertainer, written by Scott Joplin. End credit theme music is courtesy of John Primerano, the traditional song, Corina, Corina. Your announcer is Dan Gold. Hey, that's me. The show is hosted and produced by Paul Leslie. And we'll see you next time on the Paul Leslie Hour.